This is chapter 8 of Gases. Section 6 is Avogadro's Law, the relationship between volume and moles. Avogadro's Law states that the volume of a gas is directly related to the number of moles of the gas. Mathematically, that means that the quotient V divided by N is a constant as long as we hold the temperature and pressure constant. So if you have, say, one mole of gas in a one liter container, and you want to add more particles to it to make it two moles of gas, then you have to increase the volume by the same factor in order to keep the temperature and the pressure constant. If you don't allow the volume to increase, then some other variable would have to change. But under the assumption that we're keeping T and P constant, doubling the number of moles will also double the volume. We can express that again through the uh, general expression here, V1 divided by N1 equals V2 divided by N2, where the V1 and N1 on the left-hand side are the relationship before some change, and then on the right-hand side, V2 and N2 are the relationship after some change. Now with Avogadro's law, we're dealing finally with changing the actual number of particles of the gas. So oftentimes this is seen not as one gas undergoing a change because you can't spontaneously make new moles, um, but it's seen more as a comparison between two systems, two gas samples that have the same pressure and temperature. Okay? But mathematically the relationship is still the same. So let's do a quick example to see how this works. This question says, if 0.75 moles of helium gas occupies a volume of 1.5 liters, what volume will 1.2 moles of helium occupy at the same temperature and pressure? And again, you can see this is sort of comparing two different samples. One sample of helium is 0.75 moles, and the other sample is 1.2 moles. Okay, so it's not one gas that you spontaneously make more particles from, it's comparison between two different gases that have the same temperature and pressure. Okay, so analyzing this problem from this perspective, you see the number of moles, right? So this is N1, this would be the initial volume, so this would be V1, so we can already start to see that we're looking at an Avogadro's Law problem. Uh, this would be the new number of moles, N2, and then it's asking what volume, right? So that would be asking us for V2. And then again, it says temperature and pressure are constant. So that's what we do to analyze the problem. We know we're using Avogadro's law at this point. We know V1, N1, and N2, and of course P and T are constant. So we're trying to solve for V2. And here again, because we're just relating two variables, we can go back to predicting. If the number of particles, the number of moles of gas increases, then we would expect the volume to increase as well. We can rearrange Avogadro's law to solve for the unknown quantity. We've seen this a few times now in the past several videos. Uh, here is V2, the quantity that we want. So to get it by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by N2. That'll cancel out N2 on the right-hand side, leave V2 on its own. And so we'll get V2 equals, you can say, N2 times V1 over N1, or you can just rearrange it slightly to bring the moles together. Whoops, that should be N2 divided by N1. Okay, so this is the final expression. V2 equals V1 times N2 over N1. Once we have the expression, it's just a matter of plugging in the values. So we have 1.5 liters for the initial volume, uh, 0.75 moles for the initial number of moles, and 1.2 moles for N2, the final number of moles. So working all this out, moles unit obviously cancels, leaving us with a liters unit. And so the final answer is 2.4 liters. So the answer was C. Avogadro's law, this relationship between volume and number of moles is very important in chemistry and especially in reactions between gases. Uh, so in order to properly use it, we always have to know the pressure and the temperature. Uh, so IUPAC has actually defined a standard uh, temperature and pressure to promote consistency when people report on the properties of gases. Uh, so this standard is the temperature of zero degrees Celsius or 273K, because all of our temperatures should be in Kelvin, uh, and a pressure of one atmosphere. Okay? This is STP, standard temperature and pressure. Uh, this is actually an older definition. There's a newer definition that uses a different unit for the pressure, um, but we're not going to worry about that. We don't want to confuse you with too many units, so we're going to stick to this older definition for now, which is still used in practice in a lot of places. 
So once we have the pressure and temperature set, then we know that the volume is directly proportional to the number of moles, which means we can really convert between the number of moles and the volume. So we can calculate exactly how much space one mole of gas will take up, what volume it'll occupy. And so if we do this, we can measure this experimentally and we find that at standard temperature and pressure, meaning zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, one mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. So this is what's known as the molar volume of a gas at STP. And it doesn't matter what the gas is, any kind of gas uh, has the same molar volume at STP, as long as it can be considered an ideal gas, which most can. Uh, so this molar volume, like I said, can be used to convert between the volume of gas that you have and the number of particles that you have, as long as you know that you're dealing with a system at STP, standard temperature and pressure. And so we can take this equality here, this equation, and again, develop two different conversion factors, one mole per 22.4 liters or 22.4 liters per one mole. To illustrate what this means, we have here three different balloons that all have the exact same temperature and pressure. So they're all at STP, 273K, and one atmosphere of pressure. Okay? And they each have one mole of gas in them. So the first one is one mole of helium, the second one is one mole of oxygen gas, and the third one is one mole of nitrogen gas. And so since they are all at STP and they all can contain one mole of gas, all three balloons will have the exact same volume of 22.4 liters. Okay? That's what it means for the molar volume of a gas at STP to be 22.4. That's the, the volume that one mole takes up. Now notice that they have different masses, right? A mole of helium atoms weighs 4.003 grams. A mole of oxygen molecules weighs 32 grams. A mole of nitrogen molecules weighs 28.02 grams. So if you actually collect the gas in the balloon, and somehow condense it down and weigh it out, you'll get different masses. But that really doesn't matter because none of the gas laws that we've seen so far depend on the mass of the gas, right? It's one of the fundamental principles with fundamental postulates of the kinetic theory of gases is that the type of gas doesn't matter. They're, the interactions between the gas particles are negligible and the masses don't come into play, okay? So all of these different types of gases have the same molar volume at STP. So this is an example where we could use that molar volume to convert between the number of moles and the volume. So the question is, what is the volume occupied by 2.75 moles of nitrogen gas at STP? So as soon as we see STP in a problem, we can begin to uh, think about the molar volume. So to analyze the problem, we know how many moles of gas were given. We know that we're at STP. Uh, and so we should try and remember what the molar volume is at STP in order to calculate the volume from the number of moles. Okay? And that's the plan that we need. We're going to take the number of moles, we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor uh, from the molar volume, and that's going to tell us the volume. So then step three is to just write the equality. We know that at, at STP, one mole equals 22.4 liters. So we have these two possible conversion factors. And then we just need to choose the correct one so that the units cancel out. So starting from 2.75 moles of nitrogen, we want the conversion factor that's going to cancel moles in the bottom and leave liters on top because that's what we're looking for. So it'll be this conversion factor. 2.75 times 22.4 gives us 61.6 .6 liters of nitrogen. And that's the final answer. To see a slightly more complicated version of this problem, let's take a look at these two examples simultaneously. So the first question says, what is the volume at STP of four grams of CH4, that's methane? And then the second question is, how many grams of helium are in eight liters of gas at STP? So the first thing that you'll notice about both of these questions is that they are both at standard temperature and pressure. So they are probably both molar volume questions but we don't have moles in either question. We're not given moles and we're not asked for moles. In the first one, we're given mass, and in the second one, we're asked for the mass. So we need to recognize that even though this is a molar volume question, there's also gonna be a step that involves molar masses. 
So step one, we'll analyze the problems. In the first example, the first problem, we're given the mass of the gas. Mass of methane is four grams. In the second one, we're given the volume of the gas. So you have eight liters of helium. Okay? So in the first one, what you need is the volume, and in the second one, what you need is the grams. So these questions are basically opposites of one another. In the first, you're going from mass to volume, and in the second, you're going from volume to mass. Okay? In both cases, you'll need to know the molar mass at STP, I'm sorry, you need to know the molar volume at STP and the molar mass of the particular gas that you're talking about. Okay. Step two is write a plan to calculate the needed quantity. Okay. As usual, this is sort of a conversion problem. So for the first one, you're given the mass of methane and you want to get the volume. Now, we can't go directly from mass to volume, but because we're uh, dealing with an STP conditions, we can go from the number of moles to the volume. Okay? So if we want the volume, it would help us if we could figure out the number of moles of the gas. And then you can just recognize that in order to get the number of moles of the gas, you can use the molar mass. Okay? So our path is going to be to go from the mass of methane to the moles of methane using the molar mass of methane, and then to go from moles of methane to the volume of methane using the molar volume, which is universal at STP. The second one is, again, backwards. You are starting from the volume and you're trying to get the mass. Well, we can't get directly to the mass from the volume, but the volume at STP can tell us the number of moles, and then the number of moles can tell us the mass. So first we're going to use the molar volume to get the number of moles, and then we're going to use the molar mass. Okay, so once again, these two questions are opposites of one another in a sense. The next step then is to just write down your relationships and uh, figure out what possible conversion factors you can use. So the first one for the molar mass of methane, we have one mole equals 16.05 grams and vice versa. Uh, and for the molar volume of methane, we always have 22.4 liters per mole. Okay? For helium, it'll be the same, 22.4 liters per mole, but the molar mass of helium is going to be different because helium is only four grams per mole, not 16. Okay, so the difference here is, once again, in the molar mass because they are different gases. So it doesn't affect the molar volume, but it does affect the molar mass. And then we just put everything in so that the units cancel out. In the first one, we're starting from grams, so the molar mass will help to cancel grams of methane to give us moles of methane. And then the molar volume will cancel moles of methane to give us liters. So we pick the molar mass with the mass on the bottom and the molar volume with the volume on top and we get 5.58 liters, the answer A. For the second question, we're starting from liters, so we're first going to use the molar volume with liters on the bottom to cancel liters, and then we're going to use the molar mass to cancel moles. Okay? And that will leave us with grams, and so we end up with 1.43 grams of helium. That's the answer C. Okay? So review these two questions side by side. I think it helps to see uh, the two different ways that this can go, right? But it's always useful to know that you can go from volume to moles and moles to volume at standard temperature and pressure using the molar volume. Uh, and you also can't forget about using molar mass to convert between moles and mass.